here we have one of the newer Trans X batteries. We've been working a lot with the older ones from like 2010 to 2012. We've got then two new versions that started selling in like 2018 or something like that in Sweden. This is Trans X BL24 and it's a 40 volt battery. It's an 11S 3P. It's LG MG1 cells and it's the most complex over engineered battery pack you can think of. It's like you go to a battery designer and build, say, build the most expensive, most complicated and odd looking battery you can. And then they, they build this little, little snakey. <laughs> I think it's some kind of in-frame battery. It's just, it's absurd. Here's the connector. So most likely you pull it in like this and there probably must be some kind of lid. There's some, no, you put it inside like a hole in the case and then you click it. <laughs> it's just insane. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I have a cold, so I sound kind of strange. Uh, but we got a couple of these that we're gonna open up. But open up one, and it was so complicated. They have special. No, they're usually using a XLR connector, but here they have figured out something else. Maybe this is compatible with XLR. Uh, yes, here we have the 24 volt uh, charger. So probably we should be able to click. Yes, it's actually the same standard XLR pin for um, for the charger, but they have made some modification to this one for some reason. We don't have charger for this; they're quite expensive. Um, so this one we're just gonna disassemble. So these are reclaimed like warranty batteries that we've gotten. That's not supposed to work. Some of them work and have voltage. Uh, gonna see and check if we have something here. 4.5. So this one is most likely under voltage, some damaged shells. Uh, and this, uh, uh, however, it's supposed to turn blue. And I think we're supposed to have full voltage here. But here is 4.5, so I think it's damaged shells. And here you, this connector is slightly bent. So that might be the problem. But most likely this battery has been laying on a shelf for a year or so. And here you can see they have been sliding it in and it's kind of damaged. Or maybe they used some Dremel tool at the factory to cut away this piece because it was too big or something. Uh, here is a locking pin and here is a connector. Uh, Probably you are, but then there's two other pins. Uh, I've already opened one as I said, so I know how to do it. There are dual screws on all of these, but they are completely worthless because they are super glued together. And these are just to confuse you, they don't do anything of value. So oh, now they are disconnected and you will have to use, or I use, I don't think you should open this unless your mission is to say the poor LG cells that are trapped in here. I think this side is a little easier because here you can see where it's glued. And I usually start by trying to cut off a little bit of the glue. These batteries are from Trans X in Germany and actually, no, they're made in China. Being said, it's making their batteries in Germany. But Trans X is making them in China. They're just cadding in Germany. It calls little offices where they come up with this horrible Frankenstein Star Wars solution. That one was not perfectly glued out together. Yes, that is probably why they um, had to remove a little bit because they made a mistake while gluing this pack together. But they still managed to fix it. So I don't think Transex even knows about this. It's the Chinese factory that made it. I'm getting pretty good at opening Transex glued cases because it's usually not this easy the first time around. The first time you should spend like one hour but I know where the sweet spots are by now. 
and you should not start heating your battery with the hammer unless you know exactly what's inside. Now I know there are 18650 cells and I have a slight margin until the cells and they have a large yellow plate protecting them because you do not want to hit them with something sharp especially if they're lipos because TransX were using lipos all the way to like 2013 and 99% of all TransX batteries we get are lipos so there you definitely do not want to hit it in the wrong place And here it's a little bit over this rim, but here it's next to the rim. It's just, why did they spend like 100 hours designing this absurd case? So let's have a look at the connector, connector between the snakes. Here they have some rubber things that is covering up um, the wires. And here you can see the wires. And it's actually very good water protection. They drill holes in the rubber that exactly, almost exactly fit the wires. And the bending mechanism, it, this one bends like downwards. And this one bends, it kind of stretches on the wires. It's, it's so strange. So this will probably not last forever. It's not like a genius design. It's just, can you make a foldable battery? Sure we can, don't expect them to last. Now we're actually ready to open this little snake up. This lid should come right off. Oh, they were not using ME1 here. They're using Chinese NCRGA. <laughs> and it has the same capacity. It doesn't say on the outside. Cool, 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 cool. Maybe some of the glue, yeah, some of the glue were stuck to the actual battery. And here you have the date code, 7 is uh, 2017, red Chinese GAs. <laughs> there we go, and all the wires, and here is the BMS. Nah. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're using the same config as the old 24 volt batteries. They have a four pin connector, but you're just using three pins. So. <laughs> Ridiculous. Yes, so you must buy the charger. And I don't think the blue one is used. It's not used in the 24 volts. And here is the four pin to the uh, light in light and on-off switch. Light in the on-off switch. And you should be able to disconnect them now. Here you have the little snake. And also they have a fuse inside. Now how the hell are you supposed to get, get to this fuse? It's so difficult opening. Destroy that one. 30 amp microfuse. Here they have uh, the same type of connector. A config as the old 24 volt with two mill wires, which no one really knows what it's for. But they're pulling power out of this, so. And then they have this COM port, and now they're just using four of the wires, not those two additional ones. They're just there to screw with you. So most likely you are. And here you can also see Panasonic HTC 50 GA, 408 watt hours. And I think it's easier trying to cut this one open carefully. Seeing everything, yes. Oh, this is the second battery I saved today. And let's see how many cells he can save. We can save, I can save.
So here we actually have a GST. Let's see if we can disconnect. This one has to be disconnected on the BMS. Let me remove that one. Yeah, actually that worked fine. So we're gonna see the condition of these um, cell groups. How many wires do we have on this 11S? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we have full voltage in this EST. Yeah, you can see that. Oh, here's 8.8 .8 volt instead of 4.5. 0 0.8. So most likely all of them are 0 0.8. Yeah, around that. But that's actually good. We can salvage these cells because everything over 0 0.5 is actually alive and in brand new condition. So, I'm gonna save a little GAs. Uh, now all the plates are gone, so you have to be careful not to short circuit. So, and here they have dual temp sensors together under the BMS on the cells positive and negative temperature and now the cells are free from the evil trans X and they are saved by the battery doctor now they get to eat and they get to live and they get to have a happy little life in another battery pack oh thank you thank you So, here's some bonus content for you. Now, why did this battery fail? Because they're using new Sanyu GA. Even though they're made in China, they're still very good cell. One of the best on the planet. So why did this battery die? Yes, this is most likely the reason. This is lit up and it usually has a 5 volt signal from the BMS. It takes some watts to produce this 5 volt signal and it also takes some watts to produce the light when this is on. So most likely uh, the user of this battery forget, forgot to turn the battery off. Uh, and the light won't turn off automatically unless the battery is fully discharged at like this one is like maybe 35 volts when it's at 35 volts it can just last for a couple of weeks before the cells get so low that the charger won't charge so if you have an uplit on off switch that is most likely the case where your battery failed it's such a convenient way you can just see if the light is on then you know the battery is on and that is working. I know it's convenient, but it's so fucking stupid. Because it kills so many batteries every year. This kills more batteries than cancer kills humans. I'm guessing.